Okay, we're almost live. Turn that radio down, Callum. We're almost live over to Larry Lake with uh, Kellen doing the flying and navigating and ATC communications. <clears throat> and we just had an update from some of the growers at Boswell as to what's going on with these tomato fields. By the way, I'm using the uh, light speed audio uh, wirelessly connected to this headset. That's why it sounds the way it does. And it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay, so there's the tomato fields. Uh, Kellen, let's start a gentle turn to the right. The tomato fields that are planted by Boswell this year that appear to be right up next to the water level. Now, right now the water level is receding here at Tulare Lake. We've had a, a cool enough spring this year from the runoff that the water has come into the lake slowly enough. Get this thing turned around, Kellen. Let's head up towards uh, parallel to this uh, canal here such that farmers are now beginning to use this water as before it even gets into Tulare Lake. So the water is being used up uh, before it even gets down to Tulare Lake, and so the water level is already beginning to recede. Flood managers thought this uh, water was going to peak out in mid-July, but it's apparently already peaked out. Now, in previous updates, we talked a lot about these tomato fields down here that are being planted by Boswell. And what's the story? Why are they planting right here uh, when they know it's going to flood? Well, they knew it was not going to flood. This is a good heading, Kellen. Roll out here. Um, because they've got detailed GPS mapping, and this is after talking to some of the growers here, they know these sections of land right down here. They know exactly what elevation those sections of land are. And they know... Because of this land has subsided at different rates at different locations over the years, they know that currently the elevation of these sections of land is at the old elevation of the Corcoran Levee. So they knew that if they planted here, if these fields flooded, Corcoran would have flooded had they, had they not fixed the levee. So they took that gamble and planted here, and sure enough, that gamble paid off. They were able to safely plant here and not get flooded. So these sections of land, it's not like they dammed it up any higher here than it already was. They just knew the elevation of these sections and could safely plant these sections of land. Meanwhile, they did go ahead and raise the Corcoran levee right over here by three feet to make sure that that levee held around the town of Corcoran right over there. Meanwhile, the, where the Thule River comes into... Yeah, this is a good heading, Kelly. Just to cut it a little bit to the left now. Where the Thule River comes into the Tulare Lake is right along that edge of the of the lake right there. And then it comes down to here, and then it joggles. You see that joggle right there? And then it and then it continues on to the west. We're currently heading northbound. And right up there is where they broke the levee. They decided and agreed with the engineers at Boswell, the County Board of Supervisors, to break the levee right there. We'll come by and get a closer look at this break. And that's where they decided to relieve the pressure on the Thule Lake and begin to flood this old Tulare Lake Basin. Right, so we have the, uh, the old Rico airstrip is located right down here next to these buildings. And, and this is the Rico Gin located right out here to our left. And then, of course, more fields. And then there's further flooding you'll see well to our south. Well, as is explained to me, this canal that runs between this water and that water is how they shuttle this water back and forth and they can take water from here when there's an, an excessive amount of water here and they can move that water down to the south end and store it over there and then bring that water back up to the north end when they need it for more irrigation. No, this is a good al altitude right here. So we're going to come up here and get a little closer look of this levee break where they intentionally came, broke the levee by agreement between the engineers at Boswell Farming and the County Board of Supervisors. 
and they broke it on both sides of the Tulare River. And that is, or correction, the Tule River. And that is the Tule River that's inside of this levee. And there is the uh, Rico airstrip and hangar right there. Corcoran Prison located up there off, off the right wing tip. Pick that. Uh, now, there we go. Get a good look at that that levee break. Good. All right, that's a good heading for now. So the Tulare Lake is still quite huge, but it is beginning to recede. The town of Stratford, located way up there in the corner, that levee has been repaired. And of course, Corcoran over here to the right. Now up there in that upper, that would be the north and west corner of Tulare Lake, that's where the water can escape, and through a series of water works, that water can be moved back into the San Joaquin River to the north, and then that water continue to flow all the way to the Bay Area. So that's the odd way that water can be moved from this Tulare Lake Basin all the way up to the north. Because, of course, all the water that's in Tulare Lake comes from all these mountains the High Sierra Mountains rivers from here, well, from north of here, all the way down to Bakersfield. And, of course, historically, this lake was the biggest lake, freshwater lake, west of the Mississippi. But, over the years, for farming, the water has been moved through these series of canals and instead made room for farming. So that's your Tulare Lake update with uh, Kellen at the helm here getting his hours up for his commercial rating. He's at 220 hours currently. Uh, he needs 250 hours for his commercial pilot's rating. Uh, he's got 70 hours of tailwheel time. He needs 100 hours of tailwheel time before he can qualify for the insurance requirements to uh, solo in these tailwheel aircraft to be on the insurance. So thanks so much for your support. We'll see you here. Take her home, Kellen. Three hours to the north. We better get some gas somewhere first.